You know you can't go to a gym for a week and expect to be fit for life, right? You can't curb your late-night snacking for just a couple days and expect your half-keg gut to transform into a six-pack. Nor can you listen to one podcast episode and expect your whole life to change overnight. Could we agree on this? We want to be better humans. We really do. But we fail at being intentional about it. Welcome to the Mind Wrench Podcast with your host, Rick Sellover, where minor adjustments produce major improvements in mindset, personal growth, and success. This is the place to be every Monday, where we make small improvements and take positive actions in our business and personal lives that will make a major impact in our success, next level growth, and quality of life. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mind Wrench Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Silver. Thanks so much for stopping in. If you're a returning listener and haven't done so already, please take a minute and click the follow or subscribe button and then rate and review the show. When you rate and review the show, the algorithms for Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and all the other platforms will see that it's valuable and show it to more people that have never seen it before. And hopefully, it can help them too. I would really, really, really appreciate your help sharing this word with your friends and family as well. And if you're a brand new listener, welcome. I hope you find something of value here that helps you in your personal or professional life as well. Please make sure to click the subscribe or follow button so you never miss another episode. It seems most days a vast majority of us feel extremely stressed out, overwhelmed with the pace of today's high-tech multitask, too much to do on my to-do list, and not enough hours in the day, world that we exist in, right? We're a nation of mostly good-intended, hard-working people that walk through our days in a haze of uncertainty, self-doubt that we're not good enough, capable enough, smart enough, attractive enough, or even, dare I say, worthy enough of the success or freedom we dream about, that we feel we deserve. You know, like the successful people we see on TV or social media, what they seem to be blessed with. How are they so lucky anyways? Meanwhile, we all seem to be overweight, out of shape, de-energized halfway through our days, unmotivated to take on anything new, and just wanting nothing more than to sit down at the end of the day in front of our 65-inch TV, veg out on Netflix before starting this whole shit show of a life cycle again tomorrow. But in the back of our minds, in a place that we're too afraid to share out loud, is that nagging feeling, sometimes very slight, sometimes raging on the inside and dying to burst out. The feeling that we want to be, no, that we should be more than we are, that we should be growing, improving, developing into a better version of ourselves. And we all know it's possible, right? I mean, we've seen our friends, some relatives or coworkers make those transitions. We know it can be done. Maybe somebody dropped 40 pounds or they quit smoking or they left that horrible relationship. We all know that we could make a few lifestyle changes lose a couple pounds, gain a little muscle, or upgrade our circle of friends. But many times we dabble at it, not really committed, not really sustained over time. And then we don't see the results we're looking for right away because, you know, we live in an instant gratification world, and we finally give up and go back to our old ways. Sound familiar? You know you can't go to a gym for a week and expect to be fit for life, right? You can't curb your late-night snacking for just a couple days and expect your half-keg gut to transform into a six-pack, nor can you listen to one podcast episode and expect your whole life to change overnight. Could we agree on this? We want to be better humans. We really do. But we fail at being intentional about it. It's no wonder the self-development industry is in over a $47 billion market with a 5.5% annual growth rate to boot. As a matter of fact, there's a few interesting things about personal growth, or more commonly referred to as self-development, that's worth noting. In North America, over 97 million Americans have a major goal of losing weight. And that's probably thanks to the over-sugared, high-processed, and carb-heavy selections of fast food, snacks, and convenience foods that we're drawn to. The average weight in the U.S. has skyrocketed over the past 30 years. The health, gym, and fitness club market is an estimated $37 billion. U.S. consumers spent $32 million on self-care mobile apps like Calm, 10% Happier, Headspace, and a few others. The main consumers of self-development products are millennials. 
being able to spend $300 per month on average for them. Also, about 75 million millennials worldwide use self-help services, and women in their 40s seem to make up the largest sector of that group. The two most common mental health issues worldwide are anxiety disorders and depression. In 2019, around 4% of the global population had anxiety disorders, while 3.6% suffered from depression. Now, the rates of depression are higher among females than males, with like about a 4.3% of females suffering uh, compared to 2.9% of men. And those rates have absolutely escalated during the pandemic. Needless to say, we have many very compelling reasons to explore personal growth. But not only because of these external factors, but that strong internal drive to be better, to improve, to stretch, grow, and reach for a better version of ourselves. So, two questions. Number one, why does it seem so hard to make these improvements? And number two, how do we become intentional with self-development? The answer to our first question goes right to the part of our brain that's been designed a couple million years ago to protect us and keep us safe from being eaten by large predators like saber-toothed tigers. A little section of the center of our brain called the amygdala that creates the fight-or-flight response to danger. Our natural response to any kind of change can trigger this very quickly. It's like when you have to make a quick decision to turn right or left at the end of an unfamiliar road at night, or to decide on a quick this or that choice where both choices have unknown consequences. We tend to freeze up, right? It's hard to make that decision because our brains are wired to go to the negative and we think, well, what if blank happens? Have you ever looked in the mirror and said to yourself, how come I'm not further along than this? Or why can't I ever seem to get ahead? Are you frustrated with life? unsure of your future, wanting to make a change in your current situation, but too scared to make that next move? Maybe you want to reach that next level in life or in your business, but not sure what the right move is. Or maybe you feel the best thing to do is nothing at all. Many of you may not know, but along with hosting my own weekly podcast, I'm a personal development, mindset, business, and life coach, where I focus on helping people with self-development, mindset, and how to make positive changes in their lives. And trust me, with all the negativity we've had to deal with in these past two years, I think we all need some positivity, a positive change, and a fresh approach to our life or our business in 2022. Sometimes, talking to the right person can make all the difference. If you really want to start making those changes in your life, take action right now. Reach out and email, text, call, or direct message me as soon as possible. Do it right now. I'll set you up with a free consultation call and pre-qualify you for either the one-on-one or business coaching that you really need to get your life or your business on the right track to success. Appointments are available right now. We know that when we are weighing out our decision to make a change in our lifestyle or habits or our health, we know what the positive outcome could look like. But the amygdala will take over and highlight every possible thing that could go wrong or how leaving our comfort zone is too risky. And that's where we tend to stop. Fear will easily talk ourselves right out of what we intended to do to improve ourselves. Crazy, right? No worries, though. Your brain is doing exactly what it was wired to do. But once you gain an understanding of what it's doing to sabotage your efforts before they even start, and more importantly, why that is, then it's much easier to push past that unsubstantiated fear of the unknown. Start with learning and education. One of the main components of personal growth Educating yourself a little bit on what's involved with the change you're looking to make, highlighting the positive gains and minimizing the risks, studying how others have accomplished exactly what you wish to experience, and it no longer becomes an unknown to your subconscious. Write down a few notes if needed. Make it look like a planned route or where you want to end up. Go ahead and map it out. You'll find that any change is easier when you can take these few steps first and stepping out of your comfort zone won't feel so uncertain. Keep in mind the short-term pain of change now will be minor in comparison to the long-term pain of regret for not making the improvements necessary to move you forward in your life. The road to any self-improvement is going to be a journey, not a pit stop. It'll take some work, but nothing that's out of your grasp. I've been on a long journey of personal growth for many years, and I remember it was hard to start an exercise routine, but it's been worth every drop of sweat to have a body that's actually healthy and strong with plenty of energy at an age where most men are drastically out of shape. It was hard to change eating habits, but so worth it to feel better, be a little lighter, with less stress on my senior joints, 
and know that I won't succumb to the diabetes that affected many others in my family. It wasn't easy to start reading self-development books, as I always hated reading, but it changed my life massively for the better with what I've learned. And with today's technology, things like ebooks or Audible or Blinkist and others, I can just listen to a complete book even easier. The answers to our second question is very straightforward to understand, but really takes commitment and some self-accountability. But once again, nothing that's beyond your ability if you just adjust your mindset a tad. I want to share the basic concepts, 12 of the factors of personal growth or self-development that all play a part in your success as you start down your journey to building a better you. Or maybe you're pretty happy with everything in life, but this one small thing you'd like to change. Either way, all these factors could be involved. Number one, continuous process. Personal growth is an ongoing process that continues throughout a person's life. It involves a commitment to self-improvement, learning, and self-awareness. Number two, self-awareness. Understanding oneself, including strengths, weaknesses, beliefs, and emotions, is a fundamental aspect of personal growth. It enables individuals to identify areas for improvement and set meaningful goals. Three, learning and education. Personal growth often involves seeking knowledge through various means such as reading, attending workshops, taking courses, or seeking guidance from mentors or coaches. Number four, stepping out of comfort zones. This one's really important. Personal growth requires individuals to step out of their comfort zones and embrace new challenges. It involves taking calculated risks to grow and expand one's abilities. And this is probably one of the most challenging pieces of self-development is, is allowing yourself to get out of that comfort zone. To know you're not going to die, you're going to be okay, it's just going to be what it says it is, uncomfortable. All growth comes from being outside your comfort zone. Number five, mindset shifts. A growth mindset, as opposed to a fixed mindset, is essential for personal growth. Embracing challenges, seeing failures as opportunities to learn, and believing in the ability to improve are characteristic of a growth mindset. Number six, goal setting. Setting clear and achievable goals is critical to personal growth. Goals provide direction and motivation, helping individuals measure their progress and stay focused and stay on track. Number seven, resilience and adaptability. Personal growth often involves facing setbacks and obstacles. Resilience and adaptability are important traits that help individuals bounce back from challenges and continue their growth journey. Number eight, physical health and well-being. Personal growth isn't limited to mental and emotional aspects. It also includes taking care of one's physical health through exercise, proper nutrition, and adequate rest. Number nine, personal responsibility. This is a big one, too. Personal growth involves taking responsibility for one's actions and choices. It's about being accountable for the results and learning from your mistakes and keep pushing forward. Number 10, surround yourself with positivity. Positive influences, supportive relationships, and a healthy social circle contribute to personal growth. Being around people who inspire and uplift you can foster personal development. Just the same as being around negative people, they will stop you in your tracks, they won't support you, and they'll prevent you from moving forward in your life. Number 11, gratitude and mindfulness. Practicing gratitude and mindfulness can lead to greater self-awareness, contentment, and a more positive outlook on life, contributing to personal growth. And number 12, celebrating progress. Acknowledging and celebrating small wins and achievements along the personal growth journey helps maintain motivation and enthusiasm. Making those needed or desired changes or improvements in certain areas of your life absolutely takes intention. It takes commitment. It doesn't happen by chance. You can't accidentally achieve some personal growth. It happens when you make the decision to move towards growth, gain the needed knowledge to start moving forward, and commit to seeing it through until your goals are reached. But keep in mind, you are the only one 100% responsible for making it a reality. Nobody else can do it for you. And you are the only one that benefits from that personal growth. But you can get help along the way. Working with a mentor, or better yet, a coach, can be highly beneficial, and a good coach can hold you accountable and prevent you from quitting on yourself before you reach your goals. I've helped many others as a personal development or life coach, and if you'd like my help, just reach out to me anytime, or feel free to look for one of the other many coaches out there. It really does make a difference when you have someone on your side working with you. There's a great analogy I heard from one of my mentors, Dean Graziosi, 
And he poses this question, and it really puts this all into perspective. And he says, what if you got to the end of your life and you meet your maker, uh, whoever that is for you? It would be God, the universe, uh, the way these days are looking. Maybe it's an alien. I don't know. And he or she pulls out their iPhone bazillion and shows you a video of the man or the woman you could have been if you'd only made those changes or self-improvements that you bailed on or were too scared to take the chances you wanted to. And that person was totally unrecognizable to you. Wouldn't that suck? Wouldn't you instantly wish you could get a do-over or a second chance? So why take that risk? Start your own journey down the path of self-development or personal growth now. You don't have to change something major. Start with a small improvement in some area of your life, but follow it through to completion. Do it with some intention. Build some confidence with a small win. Celebrate the win. And then go after something that makes a larger positive impact on your life. I promise you won't regret it. Well, that's all I had for you today. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate your support, and I hope you have a great week. I can always be reached at www.ricksillover.com where you can find all my social media links, podcast episodes, blog posts, and much more. 